This is code.org, and we're going to display our results. So let's see. Next, we will use the values that we collected in these variables, which we did in the last bubble, result 1, 2, and 3, 3 and 4 variables in order to determine which result screen to show a user. And that makes sense, right? As they go through and as we tally up whatever they mark, we then need to calculate what to show them at the end. So create a set of conditional statements using if, else, if, and else. I need to look for two. Yep, there we are. In order to determine which result has the most clicks. And to display the correct page. You will need, uh, we're going to need this and and operator to test the values against each other. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and head over to control. And I'm going to do if and else and drag that out here. Quapow. Um, now, there's four uh, variables or four things we're going to be checking here. So I'm going to hit this plusy thingy. By that, I mean a plus <laughs> two times. And I'll go ahead and do the first one with code. And then um, I'll probably switch into text mode. That being said, we need to compare a bunch of stuff. We need to know. So this is going to be viewing the final results. Keep in mind how the user is going to hit this page. The way they hit this page, right, is they're going to hit run. They're going to hit run, start a quiz, and they're going to make a choice. Velvety smooth, right, or whatever they decide. Once they are done, the results will show. As they are clicking those options, though, as we did last level, guys, like question three, question two, question one, these are getting run each time the user clicks on a box. So question two, this is button 1A. If I search for, if I look for button 1A right here on click question one, this method has to run and it's going to pass the letter A. Where is that method? Way up here. Boom. And A is passed. We're then calculating the score. Then question two runs. Then we're going to see question three. And finally, we need to display our results. All right. So elf is elf is else if and else. And then what they're saying here with this and and for me to know that the first result or the first um, answer. The correct results show I need to compare everything by that. I mean, I need to let's head over to math and I'm first going to throw down some and ands because I want to know if result one is the greatest value. But I don't want to just know if it's greater than result two. I also need to know if it's greater than result three and if it's greater than result four. So I'm going to do greater than bloop, bloop, and bloop. And then again, the variables that I'm checking, result one. So I'm checking if result one is greater than result two. I'm checking if result one is greater than result three and if it's greater than result four. Only then do I want this action to occur. And what I would end up doing is, let's see what we have set up here. I would display, we already have this method, right? That's going to display answer one. So I'm just going to call that method which is a way of asking the program to run that code and display answer one. Cool. Now these other ones are going to be very similar. So I'm just going to hammer those out in text mode real quick. Okay, I'm going to switch back into block mode, but here we are. So what's going on now? Remember in a conditional statement, only one of these can be true. Once, let's say, result one has the highest value. So once the code gets here, it says, yep, result one is bigger than two, bigger than three, and bigger than four. If all of this is true, by the way, that's what this and means. So even if result one is bigger than two, if it is not also bigger than three, then this whole thing is false. This would never run. We're never going to run display answer one. And we must check the next value. If this happens to be true, we would run display answer two, and we are done with this is block, if block, we don't check any of the rest. So in an if statement, only one of these items, sections, conditions, will allow execution of the value contained within it. So keep that in mind. Now for this, I also didn't put parentheses here. You don't need this extra set of parentheses. They do no harm. Also, the else block here, guys, this means if all of these are false, no matter what answer four will display. 
What's nice about having an else there is if maybe they had ties, well, then this will just default to answer four, something like that. So if there's no clear cut answer, we're going to default to answer four. All right. Let's see. It looks like that's all set to go. And yep. And display. So each time this run, guys, keep in mind, it's going to execute the methods that are actually displaying answer four, three. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the Easter egg section. According to Wikipedia, an Easter egg can be described as the following. Easter egg is a message, image, or feature hidden in software, video game, film, usually electronic medium. Okay, and so we're going to create a special result, uh, create a unique set of values for our result variable, which will trigger our special result screen page. Use display Easter egg. Okay, let's find this. I'm going to switch to text mode. Aha. Ah, okay. So what this is doing, guys, is Easter egg found. The winter egg was created by blah, 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 blah. They set up a sneaky little method here that we're going to run in the in the event that a particular set of values or, or, or particular conditions are reached, and we get to choose those. Okay, create an Easter egg condition that will display a special result if the user clicks a special set of choices. So what I can do for something like this this is totally up to you, so have fun with it. I'm just going to do an if, though. And I don't know. Mine's going to say, keep in mind, there are only three questions. So for my Easter egg, I'm going to do, we have three screens right now. So let's say if uh, result one equals one and and result two We'll say equals equals one. So I'm going to do if the first three, if they choose the first three each once, that will be when I show the Easter egg screen. So, oops, and I messed this up, which you got to be careful for. Two equals is a condition, right? This is checking for something. I am asking, hey, does result one equal one? Does result two equal equal one? Does result three equal one? one. If I just do equal here, that sets result three equal to one. This is asking the computer question, hey, did they choose this once? And then I want to run this display Easter egg function. Cool. And so that is all looking good. Ooh, and the Easter egg works. If I chose one of I chose one, then two, then three. Ta-da! Cool. Onward.